Hey there, and welcome back to so much game. Uh, as a bit of compensation for me having waited so long to upload the next video of uh, Empire of the Sun, I have decided to give you a little unboxing of Fitner, which arrived this week. I think Thursday or Friday. Uh, it's by. Nuts War Games, a French war game maker. Um, I've played one of their games before, uh, which I believe is called Urban Operations, which is a tactical game uh, in modern uh, urban <laughs> tactical conflicts. Um, yeah, this one, uh, I looked at it, I backed it when they first uh, first mentioned it because, I mean, it looked, looked fun for me. Uh, it's modern, uh, a modern strategic card-driven game set in the Middle East. Um, modern theatres are something that interests me here anyway, so I thought I would definitely give it a go. And, you know... A French publisher, so fairly local to me. I don't get too many publishers this side of uh, the Atlantic. That might be actually something I could do with the channel as well. Have a look at uh, small games, do maybe a small series of uh, different games from European publishers like Fitner from Nuts War Games, uh, thinking Hexasim as well. Uh, Ventul Nuevo with um, I've got Stalingrad, the block war game that might be a fun one to do as well, and uh, obviously uh, the Finn Red Line with uh, Iron Under an Iron Sky that could be that I'll have to definitely find some table space for though because it's uh, that's a big challenging one anyway without further ado, Fitna, which apparently means schism in uh, in Arabic, we'll open it up. So as you can see I haven't opened it at all, the cards are still there. Oh. Let me go get my knife. Try it like this. <laughs> there we go. Don't try that at home. Obviously, yes, I have now seen that there's a little strip on it to open it, like most cards. But there you go. Uh, so lots of cards can't really tell you what they do at the moment as i haven't played the game yet but uh, reinforcements dash no fly zones it's strategic it's card driven so these are all going to be important i suppose in that way it's not too dissimilar from uh, empire of the sun that i'm currently playing and i need the knife for this because i should be able to just oh. Open it. Like that. Man, I'm having having a great day. <laughs> yep, more something leadership combat engineers, truck bombing, mobile artillery. Katayushas. Oh, well, glad to see that they still get around. Uh, close air supports. Diversionary attacks, IEDs, chemical weapons. Yeah. It's, uh, I suppose the only problem you have with uh, this kind of super modern Middle East game is obviously. There's a fair amount of situations which it will be modeling that are ongoing. 
which can obviously be a bit uh, controversial or tense. But there you go. I mean, I enjoy wargaming for the historical aspect, and to be honest, because it gives me a fairly decent insight into a lot of the political activities that happen all over the world, or have happened, and how various of the situations that we live with today have come into being. Um, right, the rule book looks fairly light. I'm going to say super light. Uh, all in all, it's 15 pages. I like it. <laughs> the less I have to read, the better. Because uh, I'll probably forget half of it anyway. If I forget 15 pages worth of rules, well, there's really no point in me playing. Uh, and these are the scenarios. I think there's a about um, right, so it's 11 here. I thought there were about 12 or something scenarios that I uh, knew. Uh, yeah, so civil war in Syria, obviously. Yeah, that's from 2012 to 2013, but uh, for a large part, there's still a lot of that going. Islamic State, Kremlin counterattacks. I uh, yeah, see that's sort of the build up uh, throughout the Syrian civil war, then some hypotheticals, Iraq evades Kuwait again, uh, Turkish military intervention in Iraq and Syria, I think that was meant to be a hypothetical one, but um, there you go, welcome to the modern world. Um, the struggle for Kurdish independence, obviously also ongoing, limited war between Iran and Saudi Arabia, we hope to avoid that. Uh, Dachau versus Hezbollah, Israel attacks Lebanon and Syria. Basically all of them we hope to avoid in general because cardboard wars, perfectly fine, real wars, not so much. Uh, regional war in Syria, Israel, Iran, Russia, Turkey, after the US withdrawal, that'd be a big one, and then Fitna, the global war for the Middle East, which is the full campaign, which I think is just all of those scenarios set together. And uh, it does appear to also have special rules for four players, so it can be played two player, I imagine. Now, let's have a look at the chips. They look quite nice, don't they? I like the colours, they're not too, like, Totally exuberant, uh, nice little details in there. Let's see if uh, my camera will autofocus or not. Or maybe do it one at a time. Start this side. I'm already pushing them out. Oh, there, there. Pretty much tap outable, which is also good. There'll be no. Uh, no mess is made in removing them. So, yeah. Tank unit. Find out what that is in the rules, but I think it's in those. And, yeah, there, two steps. Uh, so, and then there's some. Uh, Effects, markers, isolated, no retreat, special forces, ceasefires, turn, IEDs, uh, that appears to be fortifications of some kind, well, sandbag fortifications, not of some kind, of the clearly obvious sandbag kind. Uh, move IS, because to hell with them. Yep, there we go. Oh. Uh, and these are more yeah, Iraqi units, Russian units, Syrian, uh, Hezbollah, Shia, Sunni, uh, everything you need for a Middle Eastern conflict. And then 
wild it really really loose which in general wouldn't be a problem unless you were doing an unboxing video uh, <laughs> uh, some UK units in there uh, 16 there so yeah they would be there uh, they'll probably be the first lot to arrive and then obviously US units French units and uh, obviously French company so they were definitely gonna get a go and you know the Middle East um, then Saudi Arabia Jordan uh, yeah Kuwait the United Arab Emirates Yemen Oman Bahrain Qatar Turkey yeah. Hmm. Looks fun. I'll be honest, kind of want a playlist now, which I suppose is the point of the game. Uh, and these appear to be scenario setup charts and well, combat resolution table. Let's have a look at this. It has a sequence of pay, play on it as well. Event supply, three check lines of communication. Yeah. Event planning. How many cards to acquire operational points? Hmm, interesting. Movement, uh, offensive, strategic movement, adjust cards for remaining players. And then let's have a look at the combat resolution chart. A uh, lot of ARs, which is repulsed, attacker repulsed. Mm -hmm. Exchange. We all know that one. Defender retreats. That's the one I wanted to get in Emperor of the Sun tonight, but didn't. All defender surrenders. Yep. Column shifts. And then an international tension table. Hmm. I suppose that increases the level of international tension in general. And these are also the scenario cards. Uh, each uh, scenario card has combat resolution and sequence of play on the back. So yeah, uh, each card is for a specific, it's not a scenario card, but actually um, for a specific country. So specific side, in this case, Israel. Those are, I imagine, the scenarios they participate in. Okay, now we're cooking. Yeah, and it has their victory conditions on it. So those are handouts for uh, for the sides, and this is the actual map. Pretty big map. Not too bad. That sort of. Big. And there's another fold at the bottom that you can't see yet. But, uh, let's see if we can try and guide it across the table so that you can uh, get a look. Mm. The blue was optional, but I thought I'd go with it. All the way down to QA. Yeah, that um, just typical sort of uh, normal map card. Uh, the components look nice, pretty big. Uh, also, you know, it's a strategic game, so there's going to be a low density of them. Pretty big, nicely thick, seem nicely made as well. Printed quite uh, nice colours too, so. I think overall looks like a, a good one and cards now. Uh, yeah. They're a bit no nonsense, uh, but they all have. <laughs> my name is Bond. Oh my god. Okay, then they all have a, uh, a little, yeah. A little flag or a little event picture on it, but also a 
the description but uh, also nicely made nicely printed as well uh, it says at the back what they are assets events joker cards I mean bond could just as easily be joker <laughs> and events yeah but uh, all in all it looks like it will be fun and obviously the uh, highly required dice for your endless dice collection of dice from games that you can't remember where they came from uh have a quick run through of the rules introduction game components scenario book counters so those are the unit color codes useful to know ah we'll have a look so the uh, first number is attack second number is defense and the third number is capacity to exploit a breakthrough or air mobile movements or the movement allowed so if it's red it's uh, exploit capable basically mechanized units uh, but not all mechanized units um, and yeah that's that third number is the movement movement points okay stacking for units in a single space controlled spaces that's ownership that's supply that's sequence of play and everything moves uh, and that's the international tension control coup de darts fun and how to win and so forth and the designer's notes yeah fun to be honest i look forward to playing that and like i said might make a little uh, series about publishers here over the pond uh, in Europe, we don't get all too many war games here, but we have enough, and they seem to be of a fairly decent quality. So uh, we'll give this one a go at some point too. But I owe you a few other games before that. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think of Fitner, what you'd like to see me play in the future. If you have any favourites uh, amongst the European publishers or their games. And other than that, leave any comments, uh, questions and the like in the comments section. And as usual, stay safe, stay gaming. <laughs>